Okay, so we've created our first bar graph, and it's probably worth now, if we've created some uh, data in PRISM, to maybe do some statistical analyses on it. Of course, we've got three groups here, so the statistical analyses we'd probably choose would be a one-way ANOVA. Um, we could, of course, do independent t-tests between groups, but that isn't scientifically applicable in this situation. So to do a um, quick statistical analyses of these data, it's very simple because these are in the right format for statistical analyses. If we go to the experiment one table again, we have three groups of data listed in columns. These could be, for instance, repeated measures. This could be the same cell measured at one time, a second time, and a third time. Or these could be six independent experiments run three times. So we've got six readings, six readings, and six readings, which in this case the numbers I've made up would represent that. So we've got six repeated independent experiments. So to do analysis of this it's very very simple. You click on the anal Analyze button and down here you've got a list of all of the um, analysis built in. You can do some um, your own little equations and things but to be honest the simplest ones are in here. You can do various things like normalizing, we'll come to that later, transposing, some XY analysis with regression analysis. But what we're interested in is column analyses and we'll look down here and we've got a choice between t-tests, one-way ANOVA, basic column statistics, frequency distribution, um, curves and correlations. We're going to choose one-way ANOVA and we're going to choose all three groups. Press OK. It's going to ask us now, we're doing a one-way ANOVA, is it repeated measures? No it's not. Is it non-parametric test? So do we want to assume it's not Gaussianly distributed? Well we don't know that for, for this one so we're going to leave that and we're going to choose a one-way analysis of variance as our test. Of course, if you've done a one-way ANOVA, the results may well just tell you that, yes, there's a difference between these three data sets, but it doesn't tell you where the difference is. So once you've determined that there is a statistical difference through ANOVA, the best thing to do is a post-test, and in this occasion I'm going to do a two-key comparison of all columns. So it'll do a two-key t-test between each of the columns afterwards and tell me whether A is different from B, A is different from C, B is different from C, etc. And I'm going to choose my significant level at 0.05, so 95% confidence. And I'm going to press OK. Now what it's done is it's created another table here. You can see we've got one-way ANOVA of EXPT1, which is our data table. It tells us this is experiment one, and it tells us that yes, if you do a one-way ANOVA, you end up with some significant differences somewhere in the data, but we don't know where it is. So now we move down, and this is two keys, multiple comparison test at the bottom here, and it can tell us what our different comparisons are. Control versus group A is significant to less than 0.05 with a single star of significance. Control versus group B is significant with three stars, and group A versus group B is significant with two stars. So I randomly made up some numbers here, and obviously my random numbers were fairly tight uh, in difference. So we've got three different sets of data which are all significantly different from each other. So group A versus control is one star of significance, which is 0.05 or less. Group control versus group B is three stars, that's 0.05 or less. Uh, sorry, yeah, 0.005 or less. Group A versus Group B is 2 stars, that's 0.01 or less. So we're very happy that these data are significant, and we can basically now go to our graph and add some stars. So we go to our experiment, and this is one star from here. So we may want to just put a little star. If all we're interested in is difference from control, we may want to put one little star there. Click on our text button, and let's put in three little stars there. So now we know that these stars indicate significance from control. However, the data also told us that group A is significantly different from group B. So it may be worth, in this instance, adding another indicator to say that group A is different from group B. So we can choose this little drawing tool and put in a little line. So we're going to choose this one. I'm going to draw a little line across between these two just by clicking. Again, double click on things. We can make this nice and thin. Um, and we can put a little down line on the end of it. So now we end up with a thin line comparing these two columns and then we can write up here that this is two star significance and drop it into place. And then you can highlight all of that and bring it down so that everything looks nice and neat and tidy. So now we've got a graph that is suitable for publication showing that 
control is significantly different from group A, group A is significantly different from group B, and control is significantly different from group B as well. Um, you may want to put different figures on here, you may want to put little hashes or anything you like, so you can either type them in, like we've done here with little hashes, or you've got a symbol drop down list up here, there's some various Greek maths and other symbols, European windings, all the usual stuff, and so you may for, for, for this instance want to put some other symbols in and you can play around with that. Of course you can also add any Windows uh, text symbol so you can add, you know, I could, I'm just randomly putting dots in there, that's a little bullet point and you can put anything you like. So, you know, you may find that um, doing different symbols helps you out. But there we are, that's a quick way of doing some very simple statistical analyses on some bar data and this is doing uh, one way out of it.